Negotiators from Kiev and the self-proclaimed authorities in East Ukraine are set to follow up the agreement of the current truce with more discussions next week. Now, in a phone call on the fragile ceasefire, the Russian and Ukrainian leaders agreed that it was holding. RT's Polisia is in the region's biggest city, Donetsk. Certainly from the start, it was understood that it would be a very fragile peace. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, spoke via telephone with his Ukrainian counterpart yesterday. And the two did agree that although it was shaky in most senses, it was still holding. They spoke about ways that they would be able to make it more durable. One of these ways, of course, being cooperating in terms of humanitarian aid that is being brought by both the international community and the Ukrainian authorities. We are also now hearing from the Ukrainian interior minister that additional troops have been deployed to the city of Mariupol. Now, I have been traveling these checkpoints. I can tell you that most of the checkpoints, you still encounter both soldiers on the Ukrainian side and anti-government fighters who are incredibly tense. They are holding on to positions that they held on to prior to the ceasefire going into effect. But certainly the mood on the ground is one of deep suspicion whether or not the ceasefire is going to hold. And certainly the more violations we keep hearing about, more questions are being asked about its um, durability. Well, reports suggest at least one life has been claimed by renewed fighting in East Ukraine's port city of Mariupol. Locals say there there have been sporadic attacks across the region. Russian monitors there have blamed pro-Kiev mercenary gangs. Well, earlier today, Paula also visited one village in the area where a house was hit by shelling. Here in the village of Spartak, an hour ago, this house was hit. You can see the smoke still billowing from the roof. It certainly is a very, very fragile ceasefire, and it's not clear whether indeed it will stand the test of time. But now, some two days after that ceasefire was signed, we're still seeing shells hit residential areas like this. <laughs> As you can see, the shell hit <coughs> the roof of the house, so the whole roof of the house has collapsed and it's still burning. <laughs> We've been ordered out of the area. The anti-government fighters are afraid that there could be further shelling, so we're moving out right now. All right, Paula is one of the few foreign correspondents to remain on the ground in East Ukraine. Before the milestone truce, she even reported standing right next to a Grad missile launcher. Stay in touch with the latest development by following her Twitter feed. The European security watchdog, which helped broker the truce along with Russia, has released details of the peace plan agreed in Minsk earlier this week. First, the sides agreed to an immediate cessation of fire. And in a big concession by Kiev, the plan also grants special status to the rest of regions with an early election, local election said to be held. Also, the truce would be observed by European monitors. And Kiev and anti-government leaders also agreed to an exchange of all detainees and to the pulling back of all heavy military hardware. And while both sides seem committed to the roadmap, Former Belgian MP Louis Van Oost says sporadic fighting on the ground is still to be expected. This is uh, completely inevitable, uh, given, for example, just just practically practical uh, matter of the, the lack of central command on both sides. This is inevitable that these things will occur. Whether that will be a reason for the collapse of this truce, it, it does not depend on these incidents themselves. It depends on the sincerity of both sides, if I can go and say both sides here, uh, to, re to keep the truce. That's the main element, the political element. Not whether there will be incidents. There will be incidents. There will be even more. But if you look at history of this kind of truces, uh, it's not the, the fact that there are incidents that will... Uh, it's the, the, the political will that's behind it to keep it or not keep it that decides whether a truce like this will hold.